Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. I'm here with DJ Delory. Thanks for joining us, DJ. Well, I'm glad to be here. Excellent. Tell us about who you are and what you do. Hi, my name is DJ Delory. I'm an employee of Red Hat Systems doing cross compilers, but as a hobby, I also like to do electronics. I've been playing with Renaissance parts for a long time. Uh, I'm one of the lead contributors to the JITA suite of EDA tools, and I participate in a lot of the forums and helping people out doing their electronics with Renaissance parts or with our EDA tools or GCC questions, cross compilers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what uh, part of GDA do you actually work on? The part that I work on primarily is the PC board layout editor. Uh, GITA consists of schematic capture, layout, simulation, and a number of other utilities that work together. My part is primarily the, the circuit board layout engine, the, the core user interface, uh, the, the plug-in system, the, the, uh, some of the trace optimizers and reporting and stuff like that. So can you give us a bit of background history on GITA? Where did it start? Where did it come from? What was the genesis? Who first worked on it? Each Who's of the different parts of GITA originated in separate people's projects. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when the schematic capture stuff started. Uh, Lesh Havesta did the first version of that because he wanted something. The circuit board layout editor started about 25 years ago on an Atari. Awesome. And it had been ported forward to all of these new systems working its way up through the Athena widgets and, and the, the Motif widgets and, and finally to GTK. And then eventually we, we took all of that stuff out. We put in what we call the HID interface, the human interaction layer. And we build the GUIs on top of that. Uh, but it's, it's gone through many iterations. But there's still some stuff in the code where you can see that it originated decades ago. Um, the, there's the, 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 the coding methods that were used and some of the you know, names that we, or naming conventions that we would never use today because they're well-known names or, mm -hmm. or used for regular variables. And, and some of that still shows through, but we've been slowly been migrating the core code up to new code bases. We've been uh, replacing the auto routers with new technology as that comes around. We've been adding new user interfaces. There, there's two, two that we support officially plus batch, plus there's, I think, two or three other projects to add other native interfaces to it using other widget sets. In addition, we use the, the same interface that we use for the user interface also does all of our PostScript exports, the Gerber exports, uh, bill of materials, uh, and somebody's actually putting in a scripting engine as, as an exporter. So we, we, we've been working to modernize the interface and to allow us to grow even further. Uh, but, but many, many years ago. My first encounter with it, uh, a long progression of events starting with a broken air conditioner <laughs> resulted in me looking for a, a schematic capture and design package for a replacement board for my furnace. Right. And I originally tried Eagle, and the first component I placed had the wrong footprint. <laughs> And, and the board that it would allow me to do was not quite big enough to fit in the space that I had to do. So I started looking around again, and I found Jita, and I found its layout engine, and I started working with it and playing with it. And of course, it didn't quite do what I wanted, so I changed it, so that it did do what I wanted. And I really didn't feel like routing all those traces manual, so I went out again, and I found a, an open source routing engine from mm -hmm. Manchester University in England. And I made the two of them work together, so you could do your layout, Yep. push a button and have it auto-routed and brought back in. And that was the first auto-router that PCB supported. I think now we're on number three. Excellent. We, we replaced that router with a gridless router at one point, and as part of the Google Summer of Code, we sponsored a PhD candidate to add a topological router to the code. So no longer are we required to have straight lines when we're doing our auto routing. We can route curves that snake around yep. and fit into things. And he's yep. even doing some, some fantastic work with uh, trace impedance matching, length matching as part of the auto router. Um, the pictures are very pretty. I haven't actually seen it work on my parts yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got photorealistic uh, image views That, that was now. another case of somebody wanted to do something for themselves. Uh, we, have, we export Gerbers, of course, because everybody needs Gerbers. And uh, one of our users, his name was Ben, 
took the Gerbers as layers in GIMP and fiddled with the colors and the, the stacking and the transparencies mm -hmm. in order to get something that basically looked like a circuit board. And, and so many people thought that was a great idea that we ended up incorporating that code into the exporter. So our, our image export has a checkbox for photorealistic. Yep. It was originally called Ben Mode. Right. <laughs> After the guy who... Because it, he was the one to put the whole thing together. So there's a little checkbox called Ben Mode. And eventually we renamed it to, to Photo Mode. So we can export photorealistic images. And in fact, for my lab today, I had to have a picture of the board they were going to be using. But I had not gotten the board back yet. Yep. So I took the photorealistic export from the package, mm -hmm. and I took a picture of my prototype that was made in my basement with you know just yep. lots of wires all over the place. I took both those pictures and I scaled them to be the same size in GIMP, yep. and I very carefully traced around all the components. You moved each component, and I no, well no, I made them the same size. Yep. So when I cut out the parts of the board, the other board showed through, and everything oh. was in the right spot including all those little deviations in position. I, I moved a few of them that were way off and, and tweaked a few things, and it looked real. Oh, we have so many people that look at these pictures and say, oh, you've got boards. No. no. <laughs> well, where would the picture come from? Well, the CAD package spits them out that way. And of course, the next question yep. is, where do you get that package? <laughs> Are you looking at um, introducing uh, 3D component modeling? We have a couple of 3D initiatives that we're yep. working on. Um, we do have an option to use the 3D renderer to produce translucent right. layers, which is very complicated to mm -hmm. do or very CPU intensive to do, and the GPU can do it better. We have one experimental version that allows you to take your board and rotate it so that you can yep. see the stacking orders yep. and the vertical spacing, but we have not quite gotten to the point where we can model the components themselves. The other free software EDA package, KiCad, does have 3D modeling so that you can right. see all of that. And we are interested in adding it, but it's just a matter of finding somebody who's interested in doing it and willing to put the time in. What's the difference between KiCad and, and JIDA? And, uh, they're both open source? They're, they're both open source. Yep. They both perform basically the same functions. I think it's more a matter of which one is more comfortable for you to use. A lot right. of people who are new to the packages find that KiCad is easier to use because it's mm -hmm. more integrated and it's more like Eagle and it's more of a... Yeah. I, I'm, I hate, hesitate to say it's for beginners because it's still just as powerful. Sure. But it's more keyed towards usability. These a cross-platform toolkit that yeah. makes it a little more consistent, and everything is integrated together. Whereas Jita, each of the pieces is a separate application, so you don't have to use them together the way that we want you to. You can spread them out. You can use our schematic capture with somebody else's PCB layout. Okay. Or you can go to simulation, or you can put, I like to put huge amounts of scripts between one and the other in order to help me design repetitive circuits and things like that. So we, we like to think of Jita as more of a power user Right. Know, approach. Is there any uh, future in actually blending the two together? Because they're both open source. All the developers we've, we've talked with them. What we'd secret? like to do is put together a set of converters that convert back and forth between right. the, the file formats, so that you can pick and choose and go back and forth, share yep. libraries and stuff like that. Uh, in the free software world, it tends to be, well, I want to do it my way. Well, I want to do it my way, and then they do. Yep. But we, we really would like to be able to, and of course, since they're both open source, there's no reason why we can't do it. It's just, mm -hmm. again, time. Someone could come along and go, I like the bo best features of both, and do a fork of that. Oh, in, sure. In, in theory, and, and there have been forks of PCB and... before as well, right. where somebody decided they wanted a different user interface, and they yep. go off and they do their own thing. Yeah. So. What uh, user base have you got at the moment for Jita? Do you have any stats on that? I, any I don't have any statistics or? because people don't have to tell us. We don't sure. have, since it's, there's no license, we don't know how many copies we've sold. Yep. Um, I do know there have been a number of interesting projects and it's starting to filter into other things. The, the most interesting project built with JITA is currently a couple million miles away on its way out of the solar system. On which probe? It, uh, not one of the ones that anybody knows, but there have been some small probes that have been sent out right. by universities and, and research groups that, that are built with JITA. I, I know there's some uh, experiments in the UK where they're putting JITA stuff into spacecraft. Right. How many developers are there on JITA? Um, who, who it depends upon what you consider developers? developer, because there's right. kind of a really there's always gray a area between, between developers yeah. and users. Yeah. And we really only have one mailing list for both. Right. We, have, we have an internal one for the core developers. There's oh, probably only a handful of real core developers. On the PCB side, uh, mostly it's me. Yep. 
and there's a couple other people that have their pieces that work on it, and we have a few other core developers who you know, we kind of take turns you know, paying attention. <laughs> you know, life comes by when, sure. it, when it's a hobby thing. If something happens, you yeah. know, uh, we lost one developer because his wife had a baby. Yeah. Oh well. It happens. Uh, but if you include all of the other participants who add yep. their bits and pieces, we try to encourage people to add things on the fringe, plugins and whatnot. Easily dozens. But they range from somebody who's written five lines of code all the way up to people who have written, like that student who wrote the topological auto router. Yeah. Do you, um, do you see Jita being involved with the open source hardware, the new open source hardware standard? We're trying to promote the idea that if you're making open hardware, it's not really open if the tools you need are not themselves open. Very true. Now, KiCad, Jita, you know, we kind of don't really mind which one you use as long as you use something. But if you use a proprietary package, like Eagle, like Eagle or Orcad or Altium, to produce a design, is the design really open? Granted, it's you can not. use it mm -hmm. for whatever you want, but you can't change it unless you have buy the tools. So we're trying to encourage the open hardware specs, the initiatives, mm -hmm. to specify that open hardware is not truly open unless the file formats are open as well. Maybe if, if, at least if you can interpret the files and do something with the files, yes. as opposed to having a completely closed file system, we'd like them to use open source ETA tools. But at the very least, you need to be able to work with the ETA files. And how much does JITA cost? JITA costs nothing! Completely free! Maybe a penny if you have to pay for your ISP. How do you make your money? Volume!